In today's video, I want to talk about what is integer overflow. So to start off, we're going to uh, first declare a variable and we're going to simply add one to and see what happens. All right. So I'm going to have here a uh, an unsigned char called, let's say, n, and I'm going to give it the value zero. So just because it is a char, it doesn't mean it cannot be used as an integer. So I can simply assign it the value zero and it's going to store it inside n, right? Um, I'm using unsigned char simply because an unsigned char is one byte long. Cool. Now let's create a for loop. Here I'm gonna say int i and for i equals zero, i less than, I don't know, let's say 10, i plus plus. Simple enough. And inside this loop, I'm just gonna print out n. So I'm gonna say here print f percent. First, we need to figure out what we have to use, what, what format specifier do we have to use for an unsigned char. As it turns out, because it is a char, it's just one byte, we have to first prefix it with hh. And then because it's an unsigned value, instead of using a, percent, a, a d here, we have to use an u from unsigned uh, integer, right? So this prints out a one byte unsigned char, basically. Now, I'm gonna use a backslash n here and just gonna print it on the screen like that. And now if I try to run this, simple enough, we're gonna get, once it compiles, we're gonna get zeros because we haven't done anything with this n. We're just printing n 10 times. So I'm gonna actually increment it every single time we're going through the loop. So now if I try to run this, I'm gonna get zero through nine. Nice, that's something that we want. Next up, what I want to do is to also print the hexadecimal representation of this because just decimal doesn't really doesn't really help us, and you'll see why. So to print a an unsigned char in hexadecimal, all you have to do is just say here I'm gonna add a vertical bar here and just use the specifier percent hhx. I use an uppercase X here. That means that tells printf to print out a one byte unsigned char to the screen as a hexadecimal, right? And lastly, we should add an again here because we need two, two arguments for the printf. First is this one and the second one is this one, which are the same, but yeah, we have to pass them. And now if I try to run this, you'll notice I get, well, both the same numbers. That's to be expected. So let's uh, go through more numbers. Let's go like through up to 50. Right, so you're gonna increment n by one 50 times. So you should get up to n equals um, 50. So if I try to run this, you'll notice I get on the left side the decimal representation and on the right side the binary or the hexadecimal representation. So we can see here that, for example, 26 is 1a in hexadecimal. And that's correct because 1 uh, represents 16 and this a is a 10. So 16 plus 10 equals 26. So now let's sort of figure out what is overflow. Well, overflow has to do with the amount of uh, representation a certain variable can hold. What does that mean? Basically, if you have a variable that can hold only one byte, you can only store a certain number of different numbers in there, right? If you take a look at all the combinations of uh, zeros and ones, right, that number adds up to be two to the power of eight for our unsigned char because a byte has eight bits, right? And you can turn them both or on or off, right? And that number, two to the power of eight, is actually 256. Okay. So that means we can store up to 256 different numbers. Well, what if we give it a different, a higher number than 256? Well, this is what we can find out through this um, for loop. So let's say we start here at 250, right? And if we try to just increment it 10 times, right? This should go past the 256 value, but 250 is a valid value, we can assign it to our unsigned char, it's going to be no problem. But once we add it a few more times, it's going to do something interesting. 
If I try to run this, you'll notice that all of a sudden this guy, well, this guy worked for the few, for the first few numbers, right? 250 is FA in hexadecimal. I'm not gonna calculate it, but it should be that. And 255 is FF in hexadecimal. And then once it added one, right? So here N was 255 and it added one, N became zero. Well, why is that? Well, you see, uh, it has to do with this guy, with this FF. If your unsigned char uh, hexadecimal representation is just FF, that means that all the, all the bits are turned on. So you just have um, quite literally just ones here. So that's your number. If you try to add one to this, well, you know from basic algebra that if you try to add nine or to add one to a nine, you're gonna get 10, so you're gonna get one hexadecimal. Same thing happens here because we're working in binary, right? So one plus one is going to be zero, right? One plus one is going to be, and that plus one just kind of cascades out eight times. So you're gonna get eight zeros and a one here at the beginning. That would basically be 256. But you'll notice that this guy now has nine bits and we only have eight bits inside this unsigned char. So what we call this operation or what we call this occurrence is an integral overflow. What, what did overflow? This one here did overflow uh, and all these zeros were assigned to our n and this one was omitted simply because there was no more space in that one single byte in there. Now, if I try to change this to a, for example, to an int, to an unsigned int, let's say. So I have here unsigned int, and I'm gonna have to change the way we print this. I'm gonna say not hhu, but just u and just x, because now we're working with four bytes. You'll notice that if I try to run this, I'm going to get proper numbers. So, after this 255, 256 all of a sudden exists. It's not no longer zero. So once we got to 255 here, we printed it on the screen right, uh, rightfully. But then when we added one, we, instead of setting it to zero because there was no space, now there is space for nine bits, right? We know that this guy is nine bits, but we have, now we have four bytes. 4 times 8 is 32 bits, so we have enough space for that. And that also means that we can represent this number, right? So we have uh, 256, which is 100 in hexadecimal, or 1 followed by 8 zeros in, uh, in binary, right? Now, of course, you can overflow with integers. You can overflow with sine characters similarly. So if I change this here, for example, to a signed char, a signed char basically means what? Well, that aside from all the details, all the other details, the first bit is used as a sign bit. So it determines whether the number is a positive or a negative. So let's, let's actually assign it a different value here. I'm gonna just assign it um, 120, just 120, simple enough. And we're gonna add 10 to it. And I'm gonna again change the uh, specifiers here because it's a different it's a different uh, data type. So you have to say here percent %hhd from a signed integer and then here hhx, that remains the same as uh, before. So now if I try to run this, you'll notice something very interesting. We got to 120, so from 120, we got 78, that's correct, that's in hexadecimal, then 127, that was nice, 7, 7, 7F. But then once we got to 127, we added one, and all of a sudden we got negative 128. That's definitely not correct, because it should be a positive number, right? But, uh, Overflow doesn't necessarily mean that we went past those eight bits. If, for example, our first bit is used as a sign bit, you'll notice here 
7f. 7f is what in uh, hexa in, or in binary? Well, 7f we know that is three ones followed by four ones. Right. So this is it. And if we try to add one to it, so it's this number basically zero and then seven ones inside this character here. If we try to add one to it, well, again, we're going to get one, zero, 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 and four zeros there. That's fine. It fits inside our unsigned, our, our uh, char here. The problem is that now this no longer represents a positive number because we have overflown from the part that represents the actual uh, digits of the number onto the sign bit. Right, so we have overflown this guy into this guy, which represents not the number itself, but a sign bit. So that's why we're getting a negative number. And in fact, this is uh, actually negative 128 that we get. Right, so this is another type of overflow that doesn't necessarily mean that we went past the size of the container. We just went past the representation of that number. Same thing can happen with any data type you work with, be it an int, be it a long, long or a short. It can happen, it just, the boundaries are different. So let's take a look at an underflow now. It's basically the same thing and you're gonna uh, be able to find out through this example. So if I have here, for example, an unsigned, again, unsigned char, which is going to be equal to five, we know that an unsigned char doesn't store negative values, it just stores positive numbers or really, numbers that don't have a sign. That's why it is unsigned, right? All eight bits are uh, for the numbers representation. So what happens if I set it to five and then subtract instead of add here, it 10 times. And of course I'm gonna have to change this again to a U and this should be the same, okay. So if I try to run this, you will notice that all of a sudden, well, five, four, three, two, one, that, that went well up until zero. And then once we subtracted uh, one from zero, it all of a sudden went back to 255. So what happened here? Well, we got zero, which zero, I hope you know that in binary is just eight zeros for our unsigned char. And then we try to subtract one from it. And well, what do you do in this, in this situation? Well, you basically take a look at this zero and like zero minus one, that doesn't make any sense. So we have to uh, borrow and we try to borrow up until here, we go zero minus one and the computer is like, okay, sure you can borrow from nothing if you really want to. And then you can basically consider uh, there being a one here at uh, the beginning. And then you end up with, well, this number, which is, actually 255 inside uh, inside binary, right? Or inside the decimal. So really the difference between an underflow and an overflow is just that uh, with an overflow, you went from a really high, uh, really large number, you added to it something that made it become very, very small because an, a digit couldn't fit inside of it. An underflow is the opposite. We You try to subtract from a number that didn't have enough values and it simply tried to make that operation valid by adding this one here. So it under flew back to a really, really, really uh, big number. And that's about it with overflow and underflow. I hope you understood what's going on behind the scenes and that e this happens to every single data type. It's just the boundaries are much larger. For example, for an int it's, uh, 2 million or something and for a long long it's much 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 higher than that So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you got something out of this video If you do have any questions do leave them down in the comments below or on our discord server. Bye